Toluca Freak says, do you miss slam ball at times? Um, I miss being an athlete at times. I'll say this. I think I've told this story a few times, but I have, um, after slam ball, after slam ball, I really took my body seriously and I worked really, really hard and I continued to train, um, up until, up until like about into screw attack, into screw attack, the start of screw attack, I was in phenomenal shape and I could jump out the gym, right? Uh, crazy. Like I was, you know, dunking with two hands, hands, you know, poof, like more athletic than I've ever been before. Right. And I stepped, we were playing in a pickup game. I guess we, I say I, I was playing in a pickup game at a, at an LA fitness gym. And this little dumbass stepped in front of me as I'm, as I'm going down the lane with the ball and he tries to take a charge in a pickup game. Like who takes a charge in a pickup game? Anyways, I rolled my ankle and you know, during Screw Attack, we didn't have any insurance. Like it wasn't one of those companies. You know, we we didn't make any money at Screw Attack, right? Um, we we made just enough to like get by. And um, so I rolled my ankle, and I'd been dating my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, uh, for a short time, and she took care of me, right? And she, you know, did we did the rice thing, the rise ice. Uh, what is it? Rise, ice, circulate, elevate, something like that, or c compression, compression, R-I-C-E, rice. Uh, yeah, and uh, we did those things to kind of keep my foot elevated and stuff, but my, my ankle was blistered black, like black and blue, gross, all the way up, and it was definitely, there was definitely something very wrong with it, very wrong with it, but I didn't have insurance to go to the hospital to get it taken care of. So that was when my athletic career just ended immediately, right? It just like instantly ended right there. Some people tear their Achilles, some people tear their ACL or, or whatever. I rolled my ankle tremendously bad. Fast forward, you know, 15 years or so, um, and I rolled my other ankle in basketball, playing, at a, playing with some uh, old men, right? And I went up for a jump shot, came down awkward, kind of rolled my ankle. Went to go get that ankle checked out, and they, um, you know, went and got that checked out. and said, "Hey, will you look at this other ankle? You know, it's been hurt for 15 years. I would just love for you to take a look at it." The right ankle was fine. The left ankle, she goes, "Well, it turns out you have two torn, two torn ligaments in your in your ankle, and the fact that you're walking on it is amazing." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, this it is it crazy." So I've essentially been walking and playing and and living with two torn ligaments in my ankle. Um, for the last 15 years and I went in and started, you know, recently I started doing some, some, uh, rehab for it and, you know, it didn't really do a whole lot there. It's like long gone. Right. And the next step would be surgery, but I got to be honest, like what's the high end, what's the high end of surgery, right? Like I get in and you know, I can score an extra two points in old man basketball. Like what's the point? Uh, it, the, the ends don't justify the means, right? For me, it would be like, I could potentially lose feeling in my, in my foot if it goes wrong. It's like, I can feel everything now. Why, you know, it just hurts a little bit. I'll be all right. And now that I know that I have two torn ligaments, yeah, you know, I, I can work and work around that, you know, and I can wear ankle braces. So anyways, to answer your question, do I miss slam ball? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, I, I miss, I miss being able to, uh, compete in slam ball and compete at a high level. So, um, yeah, it was definitely slam ball was an awesome time and it was a really great memory. And I, I think it's one of those things, you know, I've talked, I talked about this, like the, I think one of the first episodes of this is slam ball came calling and they were like, Hey, we would love for you to be involved. I would love to be involved with slam ball, love to be involved with slam ball, whether that's from a broadcast perspective, whether that's, you know, being a coach or whatever, I feel like I could do something tremendous in slam ball because I know the game. I'm passionate about the game. I get the broadcasting side of it. I think that'd be really, really fun to, to kind of come full circle with slam ball. Uh, I would, I would absolutely love that for sure. For sure. Aaron Smith over on YouTube says, uh, what are your top three sports in your opinion? And also your top three teams that you back. Ah, here we go. Let's, let's talk a little sports. Let's talk a little sports. 
Uh, favorite sports include, uh, I like basketball. I like football. Uh, and then probably ice hockey. I think if I was to pick like the three major sports, it, I enjoy coaching soccer. I love coaching soccer. Uh, and I love playing it. It's soccer would probably be number four or football for all the for all our Euro Euro friends or friends throughout the rest of the world. Um, but probably basketball number one for sure. Uh, favorite teams include the Mavericks. Obviously, I'm a big Mavericks fan. Um, and football, I don't really have a favorite team. I enjoy I enjoy when the Cowboys win because everybody in Dallas is in a better mood, right? Uh, but I, and you know, so I naturally root for them, but I wouldn't say I'm like a big Cowboys fan. I just, I can watch any game of football for sure. And, uh, from the NHL, I, I love the stars. It's so much fun. Going to a hockey game is ridiculously fun. If you've never been to a professional hockey game, ridiculous. I love everything about it. I, I would, I would go have season tickets if I could. Uh, and I didn't, you know, live that far away from the arena. So yes. Ozzy man says Mavs Celtics NBA finals. I'm calling it now, man. I don't know. I don't know. Celtics are pretty good this year. We'll see how the Mavs do. I think the Mavs, they we'll see what happens because they're adding pieces that they had last year that were hurt, you know, like Tim Hardaway jr. And such, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that kind of, how it comes together now that, uh, they're going to have a little bit more time to gel for sure. So Watt Singh says, what was your favorite, favorite out of Nick's video game vault videos? I think my favorite video video game vault, the one that came to mind immediately was the Pat Geef video. And I'm, I think that I voiced that. I don't remember, I, but the, the Pat Geef video, video game vault from like Pac, I think, I think Nick did that one. Let me see if I can find that really quick. Cause I, cause I do have an archive of, of the old screw tech stuff um, for personal use friends. Let's watch this thing. <laughs> Pac-Man. He's just one of those videos. Ah, turns out I voiced it. I'm, I'm pretty positive Nick came up with this idea, for sure. Video game characters that requires no introduction. In fact, according to this chart, most people belong in the part that looks like Pac-Man. I mean, it, it just makes sense. Now, if the original game got a formula down that audiences across the world fell in love with so quickly, then what in the name of all that is sacred is up with Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures? What is this? Weapons? Facial? Oh, this was definitely a Nick. This was definitely a Nick. Just based off of the da-da. This was up. This is all memes at the time. Facial expressions? Marital problems at home with a controlling wife that causes stress and depression? <laughs> no, 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 seriously. Just look at the opening cutscene. It's a freaking soap opera. Ever since Miss Pac-Man kicks a butt of her own, she became a self-important feminist and refuses to take orders. You can't say that now. Cancelled! From any man. Rather than just lactate for a while and give Pac-Man Jr. some milk of her own, <laughs> she forces Pac-Man out of the house to hunt for it for himself. Pac-Man. Come on, buddy. Sack up a little bit. Come on. Now, you don't play by controlling Pac-Man so much as you play by guiding Pac-Man, which, as annoying as it is by itself, is worsened by Pac's complete lack of masculinity. Let's see. If you're a Can't say that anymore. Toxic masculinity. <laughs> Fear of bees. Depressed when spoken to by random farmers. Eats apples as comfort food. Dispirited by people who won't sell train tickets to round yellow people. <laughs> Come on! And not once does Pac-Man not do anything but run away screaming. And he sounds like Wally. Wally. And you know what? The worst part about it is the more I play this game, the more I'm siding with the misses on this one. Honestly, look how useless this guy is. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Now I've got to be honest here. I could not get past the first level of this one without either using a code or shutting it down entirely. Look at the code. <laughs> Poop! because I couldn't stand what they did to the pack store on this one. It's horrible. But on the plus side, I'll always walk away from this one knowing I'm a million times manlier than one of video games' greatest icons. And so will you. Especially when he eats a power pellet and puts on a cape to just fly around back and forth forever. Oh my gosh. This dude 
needs a serious dose of manliness. That's one part whiskey, two parts monster truck, and three parts bear fighting. No! And one part social justice warriors coming at your ass because they're upset because you had whiskey and monster trucks. All right, there you go. That that was a good one. I enjoyed that one. That was that was fun from back in the day for sure. My 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 my.